Hello. It's almost 1.30 p.m. And yesterday I had my very first exam, which went well, thank you. It was probably the biggest one I've had. Not the most difficult, but it was definitely the most amount of work. So my boyfriend stayed over and we just did nothing. And he left about an hour ago. And so now I have some time to myself. It's 25 degrees Celsius right now out, which is, I don't know how many Fahrenheit, but um, it's warm. And so, you know, I've told myself I'm not gonna knit anything except for the sweater that I'm working on, which is kind of annoying um, because it's so hot. But for that reason, I am gonna sew a dress because I told myself I was allowed to sew because when I sew, I get annoyed because I suck at sewing. I'm actually pretty bad at sewing. I get annoyed more quickly. And so I'm able to put away my sewing work quicker than I am with my knitting. So the dress that we're gonna be making is the dress by Mar May Ardour and I, Ardour? My Ardour. And I think it is inspired by that jumpsuit that Kendall Jenner wore, but she made it in like so many pretty colors. And I think she wore it as her graduation dress. And so we're gonna make that because it's really easy. I have some pretty stretch fabric that I have. It's white because I wanted something white because you know, it's warm. I want it to reflect the sunlight. And so I bought the pattern on Etsy and I printed out the size. I think I'm a size six in British sizes, in like UK sizes because I have a very small bust. So I chose the one that fit my bust the best because it is a stretchy fabric. So, you know, if it's a little tight around my waist or whatever, it still stretches, right? But it just needs to fit around my chest pretty well. So I printed out that pattern. I think these are all the pages, but my printer ran out of paper and I added some extra. So I still don't know if all of them are printed out. And the thing is, if it's, I can pin it on and draw it. And before I sew it, I can kind of like, you know, see. I forgot the word for it, but the ah the seam allowance, the seam allowance, the seam allowance is included in the pattern itself. But I'm gonna add a little extra just to be sure that if it's a little too small, I can still rely on that extra seam allowance to make it a little looser. Um, because I did think about printing it out bigger, but I feel like just this is just gonna be fine. So we're gonna piece this together and we're gonna cut out the pieces and then put it onto the fabric and then we'll just see how far we get because I also wanna really like finish a book that I'm reading and it's also like really hot so I don't wanna be in my room all that much, okay? So let's get started with that. Okay, so I was already kind of confused on how to do this because there are these little lines and arrows but apparently, and I was kind of like wondering how I should line up the pieces but she does it by folding over the edge on that line, I'm guessing. But it's kind of like weird. I'm like, I'm not gonna do it very straight. So I guess you do it like this and then you place it onto the paper next to it and then tape it to each other. Usually I'm the type of person that I cut out the pieces first and then I just tape them together because I feel like that makes more sense. But usually people have like full lines going through their patterns so you can just like cut on the line and she doesn't have that so I guess I'm just gonna go with the folding method. Wait, I'm gonna do this with a ruler. I have cut out the pieces and I must say they, they do look pretty narrow but maybe because you know I have to place them on the fold of the fabric Maybe it'll be all right. I don't really know. We'll see. That's why I'm gonna cut it out with extra seam allowance. And I'm also gonna sew it on the seam allowance that I cut out. So, you know, it might be a bit bigger, but who knows? Maybe it fits perfectly because I, I've checked my measurements and I am a size six just because my, my, my uh, I think my waist might be just like a centimeter bigger, but I have a very small chest. So that's why I went with a six. But yeah, there are the pieces in my gross looking lunch. My lunch is just, Pasta pesto, okay, don't like. Okay, let's get the fabric out. It is so hot in here, I swear to God. Okay, so I moved into the room next to me where I folded the fabric and realized that was actually kind of too small. But that is why I laid the fabric kind of diagonally. So at the top, the fabric fold is more narrow, whereas at the bottom, it's a lot more wide. Um, so I thought in that way I could optimize the amount of fabric that I had without having to shorten the dress. Come on! I thought I just had just enough. 
shit, what do I do? Do I make a slit out of it? No, it's gonna be weird. I can't make a slit out of it. Because it's already like a bell-shaped... I don't know what to do. Maybe you won't see it because it is bell-shaped. Well, you know, if it's not, I'm gonna have to like shorten the entire dress, which is fine. I can just like sew the size sides, try it on, to see if I have to narrow it down to the actual um, UK 6, or I keep it at the 8. And then I'll see what I do about that tear. If the tear is not good, I'll just cut that entire part off so it's more like a cocktail dress rather than a midi dress. This is going great. Oh my god. Chaos. Let's go. Okay, so I didn't end up cutting any length of the dress, which I'm very happy about. Instead, I just installed a patch where the hole is. So I just sewed on a different piece of fabric where the missing piece was with a zigzag stitch and because the fabric is so textured you really don't see the stitch as much um, which is really nice i tried to match up the embroidery on the fabric with the hole so i think that kind of worked out well i'm going really slow just to be safe Okay, so sorry about the audio in the previous clip. I was recording on the front camera of my phone where it automatically adds like a muffled sound and a static noise. But here I am trying on the dress. As you can see, it was kind of loose. Um, this was just when I sewed the two panels together and I did end up making it into a size six instead of a size eight. Um, and here you can see where the fabric was lacking. Um, and so I thought about cutting it short, but in the end I actually just sewed a patch on top of it. And so I didn't have to eliminate any of the length, which was great. fucking kidding me this is where i started this is where my bias tape ended <laughs> how rude what am i supposed to do maybe okay i can try how am i gonna connect this is like a leftover piece how am i gonna connect this neatly <gasps> how sh fuck damn there's more than four meters of bias tape in this goddamn dress <laughs> Sorry about the weird camera angle, but that's because my room is a bit messy on that half and I just wanted to move around. But as I said in the last clips, I needed bias tape to continue making the rest of the dress because the straps and the neckline and the hemming on the bottom are all enforced with bias tape. Now how much bias tape do you think you need for a dress? Four. I needed four meters. I went to the fabric store guy, I walked up to him with a little roll and I went, Hi, um, yeah, just these four buttons and then the quilting fabric because I'm making a purse for my mom. And he says, yeah, how much of the bias tape? I go, four? 40 centimeters? No, four meters. He, goes, he just pulled this face. And then he started cutting it. So, four meters of bias tape, which is a lot. And sewing bias tape is not fun. And also, I do not... Bias tape is pre-ironed tape, basically, right? But in the video, see, she suggests ironing it with a bit of overlap so that, I don't know, you make sure that you always catch, that you always catch the thread on the back of the fabric. Which, I don't wanna do that. I might just like sew it on really slowly. Oh, and I have to sew on that little patch on the bottom, but my sewing machine was kind of acting up yesterday. The thread on the bottom would just keep catching, so I don't want to do that. I just want to do something else right now. And I hope 
this is like the right shade because they had like a pinky white, they had like bleach white, and this is like ivory white. So I hope this is good. We're gonna move back to the ugly room, oh, which is the guest room, which is not really decorated, but my sewing machine is there because I'm not gonna keep all of my hobby stuff in my bedroom. So I'm sorry, I have no like way to put my camera over there. So it's gonna look kind of quirky. Right? I mean, we can like get started. Maybe do the bottom first instead of the neckline because the neckline honestly is scary. Please don't fall, please don't fall, please don't fall. And I'm running out of white thread already. Oh no, I do have to sew on the patch first before I do anything else. Okay, so I attached the bias tape to the back. And I think it looks fine, although this fabric, because it's like two by two ribbing, um, it's very stretchy. So I'm afraid that I attached the bias tape while the fabric was like too stretched, so that it'd be like loose around my back. I hope that doesn't happen. I don't think it will. Um, but now the next step, well, it's 6.20 p.m. So I'm gonna continue studying. But um, when I'm done studying, I'm gonna attach the bias tape to the front and I have to get about like a meter and 40 centimeters of bias tape and like attach it down the middle of the neckline so that the rest of it can go up like this along the collarbone and then the rest of the bias tape that sticks out on both sides are the straps. And then I'm gonna have to ask my mom to like pin down the strap so that it's like a proper fit. And then we'll just have to do it along the bottom and then we're done. Like, honestly, when I was in the fabric store an hour ago, I was like, I saw like more like stretchy cotton. And I was like, I wanna make more of these dresses. But like one is probably enough. And I feel like if I wanna make more clothing, like start sewing more often, I wanna invest in a serger because if I wanna sew something, I wanna wear it. And like, just like I invest with yarn for like knit stuff, so it stays nice very long. I want to invest in like a serger so that the finishing looks nice because right now I just do a zigzag stitch and honestly I don't like love that too much. It doesn't look very nice and I don't think it's as durable. So getting a serger one day is great but right now it just feels like um, not as useful a purchase because I don't sew that much. But you yeah, have to continue studying now. We have attached all the bias tape at the top and the back and in the front. Now I must say that the one bra cup falls forward and the other doesn't, but they are very symmetrical. Like when I wear them and I wear a bra underneath and I feel like, you know, it fills everything up because I have very small boobs. It's gonna look nice, okay? It's pretty even, um, but then I just have to attach the straps. I know they're a different length because I already trimmed this one and I didn't do that with this one. I also didn't iron my bias tape because I'm lazy, but it looks nice. So the only thing I have to do now, but I don't, I don't know if I'm going to do that today, is I have to sew down the straps. And then I guess tomorrow, because it's 8.30 right now, and I'm actually not done um, reading academic texts. And then tomorrow I will do the bottom, and then we're done. How cool is that? I'm actually much further away from the cows than I thought I was going to be because I wanted to take some cute shots of the dress where the cows are and I thought, oh, okay, I don't have time to walk through the entire park in order to get to the cow, so let me just park my bike all the way at the end closer. But now I'm just walking on this cobblestone road for more than a mile before I can even reach the spot where you go down to get to the meadow. I think it's great that this is like such a big park and not a lot of people walk around here so that I can just like talk freely. I do wish that I, well, I have to wear a bra with this, otherwise the neckline wouldn't like look nice, but I'm wearing a bright blue one and the straps don't really match in the back. So I kind of regret that now, but you should just imagine it without the bra, okay?